For this video, I would like to share from a member of the Lubavitch community, which is, if you refer to my previous video, I posted a video about the Lubavitch Rebbe. The Lubavitch means Lubavitch, which is a place in Russia. I believe that is um, the main place that in my lineage, you can look at the dress code and some of the eating habits and culture uh, you know, gestures, so on, lifestyle approaches, it's because of the place that they lived in. So in this case, um, there's added elements, which is that the most recent Lubavitch Rebbe studied with Erwin Schrodinger inside of the university in Berlin, because he was able to, and so what we call now light workers, quantum mechanics, light work, um, many, many decades ago, I mean, this this human that I'm referring to um, is is writing about this now. His name is Alexander Polterak. He's a great teacher. I believe he's also a rabbi, but I, at least I'll say he's a scientist, rabbi, or whatever. You know, he has titles, I'm sure, but um, he, he shares very interesting points. And so he studied also under this man who was a light worker that he passed from his body in 1994, but he was around for many, many years, um, creating a community from... Um, the, the uh, lineage that the dynasty really that he had married into but also had been born into and um, all right so I'm going to read from what this person um, is sharing you can find his website quantumtorah.com and each week um, there's a related uh, Parsha portion that Jewish people read and we make it with the times like it's our code it's our interest um, it's like people who read magazines for the stock market and they know how reality works. People who read the Torah start to understand each week how the code of life is telling them the ways to interact. And so um, he does this by bringing a science element in as well in this modern time where, as is quoted um, and prophesied, that the whole world will show God's glory, including like um, right now I see a plane trail right outside of the window that I'm looking out of, which I always consider to be a good sign. And um, especially when I set it at 2-2-2. Um, and so the, the light which connects reality points that could be separate are often called in Judea, in, in Hebrew, hashkacha pratis. They have like a divine providence. They're like, they've got a seal. They've got a seal that shows that it's... Uh, in the details, that even the, the high seal is in the details. You see, even the king is writing the letters to each individual person in the entire place. Like they, It shows that God's in the details. It's like there's the highest divinity, the most regal is in the smallest tiny little bits of everything. And um, that's what we would say quantum mechanics is, in every single bit of light which unites and edges. And I mean, in this substantial reality, we would say it is all a, um, a shechina is the dwelling, the indwelling of all the light. The light that, depending on how fast it's moving or some properties it has, is what color it appears, what its density, volume, matter, shape, and constitution is, and compounds that are made of multiple things also have then further derivatives, which are then altered by their like their predecessors, like we would say with humans, we're coming from, we're like derivatives from our, from the previous, we can't say any one human is ever really the all, but yet every human is the all, so, and kind of like Mishkan is the dwelling place, you could say God dwells in all, and God dwells in everything, and perhaps also it's worth adding that in um, Torah, we would say the, in, in Torah teaching, we would say that the soul element can relate to the world on such a level that we would see that even the rock has spiritual emanation. A, a very dense vibration, perhaps not easily measured by whatever less refined, more crude tools we have. But nowadays, what used to sound like science fiction is now becoming apparent. There are auras of plants, which are readily measured in various laboratories in the entire world now. That was a known Kabbalistic truth that the plants have spirit emanation. And there's another level, obviously, past the mineral and the plants, which is the animals. So hopefully in the future, I was writing today about the animal sacrifices um, that were done in the Mishkan, which I'm about to read about, um, but and also in the Beis HaMikdash, which we, in a togetherness, one soul kind of 
belief of the Jewish people, a base mikdash is the house of holiness. Can you imagine everyone in the whole world is one family in one house? And so we all welcome at the table because we're all the father's children. So that's kind of like a, a different kind of reality than most people are ever used to in pretty much day-to-day -day life, but also in our internal family system, which is now a concept that has become also very talked about. And so if we can have God dwelling in us, then we can be part of anywhere that God is dwelling in and we become those lights that we just mentioned. We are those emanators and so on. And there's this macro and microcosm. But I will share a picture first before I go into this. Um, and it's frequencies. And I just want you to look, these are nanometers. So nanometers are thousandth of a meter, right? Or is it a 10,000? Um, I, should, I should find out exactly for sure. Nanometer to meters is, oh no, negative nine. How many, how many, um, it's one billionth of a meter, not a thousand. It's not a thousand thousands, it's a thousand thousand thousands. Okay, a nanometer, a nanometer is a thousandth, a thousand, you cut it into a thousand, then you take one piece, cut that one into a thousand, and then you take one piece and cut that one into a thousand. There's nine zeros, so it's three sets of zeros, right? You cut each one three times the three zeros. And that's how you think about it. Now let me go back to, forward to the, okay, Mishkan, a metaphor for quantum reality. And I will show you the picture, and I will get into it. So remember, this is taught by Alexander Polterak, who studied quantum mechanics in his, in his career since he's a teenager. Um, for fun, reading books and, and theories and theorems self-taught by from Albert Einstein, similar, right? And then also part of the group that was um, formulated and heavily influenced by the Lubavitcher Rebbe who studied with Erwin Schrodinger, who um, everybody's familiar with the Schrodinger equation, which is um, the state of existence, non-existence of a cat that has not been measured during an experiment, not yet been measured. So this potential, possible, all realities that could exist in quantum words, we say the um, undifferentiated state of light, which can become every color. The undifferentiated cell in the body can become any cell, right, from the original egg and sperm. So this undifferentiated state, which does not yet have to cling to any identity, which can only result in false judgments as the comfort of having edges um, sinks into some, you know, sense of, oh, now I have control. So really, like, in terms of... Um, the safe way to enter into an open-ended kind of journey where anything could happen, where we do not have to prepare for everything, is to really identify with also the light that we are um, able to kind of ride on. We're able to leech um, from our future self this light of certainty that as we always were okay and always will be okay and what always was okay and even though there's one animal and then the next animal and then there's me and then there's you and then there's him and her and there's just all of this but it, it's important to see that it was all undifferentiated at one point we were never born yet at one point your parents were never born yet there's a yet quality that we can always bring in it's not yet and we can wait for yet and that's um that's kind of where i wanted to bring this so that i could share um from somebody else and we'll hear like I'm gonna learn too because I haven't read this so we're gonna learn and there's no use in trying to always understand these things in conscious ways that's why I gave this introduction because it has to sink in to a place that has to be um, the certainty for living in a mystery and um, transitioning through all of the change as both that which is um, differentiated and undifferentiated so here is the color bandwidth. I'm trying to make sure there's not reflection. I'm using one device on another device. You can see 100 nanometers, 1,000 nanometers, and 10,000 nanometers. So we're at 1,000 nanometers. We can start, you can see here, this is visible. This is visible light. Okay, right here. Just this. Just this. And I will take a screenshot of this for my own self because I like it. And I will continue. Now the quote here is from um, numbers, which is Bamidbar, which also means the wilderness. Um, okay, and when the tabernacle sets, set us forward, the Levites, 
like the priest, shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. During the wonders of the, and then this is what he's teaching us. During the wonders of the Israelites in the desert, the tabernacle, or the Mishkan, remember Mishkan is Shechan, which is the same word as Shechina. And I said there's this light, we are, the light is dwelling in, in us, and then we make a dwelling place in the world for the light. Exists as, and so our certainty then makes certainty in the world, right? That everything's going to be fine and best. Existed as a saying, anyway, the Mishkan, the tabernacle, existed as a sanctuary only during their encampments. Whenever they traveled, the Mishkan was taken down and disassembled to be carried by Levites during the journey. When God commanded Moses to set the camp, the Mishkan was reassembled and set up again. Let us fast forward some three and a half thousand years to the beginning of 20th century. It was a time of great intellectual turmoil, the discovery of the atom structure by Rutherford, according to which an atom resembled the solar system with a nucleus at the center and electrons orbiting the nucleus was followed by intense research into the structure of atoms of various chemical elements. Every atom tested, excuse me, unexpectedly exhibited discrete spectral lines instead of the expected continuous spectrum. It was as if atoms were able to emit and absorb energy only of certain discrete frequencies. In 1913, Niels Bohr, you might be familiar with that mean, proposed an atomic model in which electrons orbiting the nucleus in their orbitals could only occupy certain orbitals having discrete energy levels. And he actually wrote a post called Jacob's Ladder. You could refer to that if you're interested. You could probably Google quantumtor.com, Jacob's Ladder. Anyway, um, electrons could leap from one orbital to another, quantum leaps, but they could not be found in between and nobody could understand why. One night on June 7, 1925, a junior college colleague of Niels Bohr, young German physicist, Werner Heisenberg, you might be familiar with a Heisenberg, um, with his name as well, was walking in the park engrossed in thought and it was a sudden, it was a dark night, barely lit by sparse street lights and suddenly he saw a dark figure of a man emerge from the darkness as the man passed under one of the street lights only to disappear again in darkness. A minute later the man re-emerged near the next light and disappeared again. The figure kept popping in and out of sight as it appeared under a street light and disappeared into the night. Strange, thought Heisenberg, this man seems to only exist when next to a street lamp, disappearing into darkness in between lamps. Of course, Heisenberg could trace in his mind the path along which the man was walking, but he was not visible in between the street lights as if he didn't exist. Now, we could imagine, pause for a moment, if that man stopped for any moment, he could have gone in a different direction, right, before he got to the end, even though you knew it was going in that way. So, and then it hit him like a thunderbolt. Electrons in the atom behave the same way. They only appear on certain orbitals. And when jumping from one orbital to the next, they disappear in between. Heisenberg rushed to his room, worked through the night, putting this idea into the language of mathematics. And he later wrote, it was 3 o'clock at night when the final result of the calculation lay before me. At first, I was deeply shaken. I was so excited, I could not think of sleep. So I left the house and awaited the sunrise on top of a rock. Matrix mechanics, the first form of quantum mechanics, was thus born. Subatomic par particles obeying the laws of quantum mechanics behave not like objects we're familiar with. They exist only in certain states and disappear in between. So too in the Sinai Desert, the encampments of Israelites were discrete states, which they could occupy in the desert. The Mishkan Tabernacle appeared, appeared now, right, and was reassembled and erected when in one of these discrete states and disappeared, taken down and disassembled in between. In the sense, the Mishkan represented, represents a metaphor of quantum reality. Thank you, and I will um, certainly share um, another video depending um, upon my decision, which it, I probably will not have by tomorrow, so there's a good chance I'm going to record one more video for tomorrow and then have have this weekend show me what to do about next weekend to see if there will be more videos and from which of my journals and so on it will be the right place from thank you be well bye